Hi, it's JJ Gap. Welcome back to my channel. So normally on Fridays, I try to do a story about um, some tool that's new that you may not know about. So I'm not going to do that today because I'm my schedule's all off. Since I revamped this channel, I promised to do Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Monday, I was going to share some established uh, established infrastructure tool or something that you may not know about as a new creator or a new business that's using social media to um, grow your business. And then Wednesdays was supposed to be social media Wednesdays, and then Fridays was supposed to be established Fridays. And because of the holidays, because I started at the end of the year, it's been all over the place, and I haven't been consistent, so I apologize. And I'm not even quite sure I'm going to stick to the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, because I think it's unrealistic, considering everything else I have going on with my life. I have uh, three kids in high school, well, one going to high school, one in high school, one in middle school, and they're really busy, busy schedules. And then I just have a lot of other things. I have a startup that I'm... Still trying to incubate and get off the ground, and I also have a um, several blogs that I run that I need to um, manage and promote and um, and monetize, and so th all of that takes up a lot of time. So adding this YouTube Monday was Friday thing was unrealistic. So I recognize it's unrealistic. Anyway, so today is going to be story time. So the story is about the time that I. time that I convinced everyone in the telecom space that I was a white man. How did I do that? So here it is. Traditionally, I am, uh, I went to school for journalism and, um, but when I graduated, I went straight to law school and then I practiced law for a little while. And then I had a horrible series of events that ended all that, but I'll get to it another story another time. And just, it was very traumatic. I don't want to go through it here, but during the time when I practiced telecom law, um, I had established or through some friends and through some networks set up a blog, jennifaspeaks.com, which I was um, talking about and pontificating on telecom policy initiatives. And on the header of my blog was a nice big brave, you know that traditional professional photo you take when your arms crossed and you know you're wearing your sharp you know, uh, tailored suits and your, your shirt's all crisp and your hair's dead and your face is, is beat and you're looking like authoritative and your arms are crossed and you're looking like, yeah, I'm in charge. So I have one of those images on my header. Now, I am an advocate of not necessarily putting your personality on your blog unless you're a fashion blogger or unless you're already an established entity. Um, so if you're not established in your field and you're not a fashion blogger, I'm against putting your face for this reason. So I did that and I noticed, I, you know, I'm big on monitoring analytics. So I had to watch my analytics. I had to watch the traffic coming into that site. And one thing I used to notice is that there's one, there's various different measurements of, or of, 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 engagement with your uh with your with your with your site when you have a site and by engagement i mean you know people come on and they can stay on and they can read you know it's one level on great measurement. they can read all the way through you know a long period of times so as another level or tool or measurement of engagement they can make a comment which is a more invested level of an, 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 an uh, engagement they can share your your your, your blog post or they can share your post or your article and that's another level so there's various different levels of engagement of when someone comes to your site or or if you're an e-commerce site they can actually um, um, put shop and then put an item in their cart and then the best level is they actually purchase and then not only purchase but come back to purchase but then also tell their friends about your your purchase and encourage their friends so there's various different levels of engagement and conversions when someone comes to your site so one of the measurement tools I used to watch is the time on the site when someone comes on and click on and I used to notice that they'll come on and they click off immediately so I was driving I was writing headlines in my space that was interesting enough for people to come and click this oh this is something I need to know about oh this is interesting and they would click and what happened though is as soon as when they would click and I think they would see my image in the top they would determine to themselves I know I'm interested in this topic and I know I'm here to learn about this but something about the person on the front makes me think that I don't know if I'm gonna be 
their information is going to be credible or not. I'm not, I don't know if what they're going to share with me is going to be informative or not, or is going to be accurate because I don't know if I can trust this woman. So they click right off. So that's something that I used to notice that used to happen to me a lot. And so I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And I used to get traffic from all sorts of sources. I used to get traffic from the White House, the old White House, the Obama White House, from telecom, from the FCC, from the NTIA, which is a national telecommunications infrastructure administration, very some executive agencies, some court and things like that um, all sort of levels of the high level government some think tanks used to come in because they I knew it was them because they're um, the suffix which is the suffix of the last four digits the last four names of your site so it says um, so it's like this is gentlemanspeaks.com so it'd be .gov so it'd be like FCC.gov so such and such whatever so I was getting traffic from well established um, policy think thinkers and makers and doers in my industry coming to the blog but they were not staying on long enough to hear what I have to say read what I have to say I did get some some comments and some shares on Twitter but for the most part there was something that stopped them from coming and I just don't know what it was so in my infinite wisdom, because I've been in this space for a while, I said to myself, maybe it's me. Maybe it's my face. Maybe it's my something else about me. I don't know what that's stopping them. So what I did was I created a parallel blog. It was anonymous. Um, I'm going to go ahead and out myself. It was called Broadband Lawyer. And um, it was a, a WordPress blog, but I talked about the issues. The similar things I did for GenevaSpeaks.com. I had my picture on it. I talked about the issues. I, I did some gossiping, like, you know, telecom gossiping, what's going to be next. I try to share some tidbits of information. I'd get some insights. And so it was kind of like that insider. And people like the intrigue of an anonymous blog. So one thing I noticed is that, you know, when people come on, they will stay on. They were engaged. I had like a community. I had people commenting. I had people emailing me. It was a whole different world from the telecom blog that I had when my face was the face on the madhead, madhead, masthead. So with my face, I wasn't deemed credible or informative or or authoritative enough to warrant all of these people coming here and getting all the scoops and getting all this information. Once I removed my face from it and I removed all semblance of a person on it and people were just there for the information, the raw information, it was a whole different world and people were engaged and it was like, wow, this is great. So that just tells you people's personal biases about information they get and who is it coming from if they see the person that they don't necessarily think the person's credible based on their look. Something as superficial as what they look like and whatever biases they have about the community or what that person represents, the demographic they're from is, they'll use that to stop them from getting information. They'll use that to hamper them from learning and enriching themselves based on something that someone can offer them. And that is that is that is implicit bias. That is the bias that we all have in us. And we've talked about bias. A lot of the people who are beneficiaries of bias um, who are privileged class, they get they get nervous. They don't like talking about it. It makes them uncomfortable. But Everyone has biases, even people who are not from the privileged class. We all have biases. It's just a matter of, based on our own personal experiences, our backgrounds, things that we personally went through, things that we believe in, things that our parents taught us, things that we learned in school, things that we learned from just interacting with friends and colleagues. It colors our experiences. It colors our notions, our, 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 our perceptions of people, places, things. And we carry those with us, and they're buried in our psyche, and it travels with us, and we make decisions. Some of those decisions aren't necessarily bad because your bias can protect you can save your life it can make you make it you know protect you from making a bad decision and letting someone in your life or making doing something um that may harm you or your family members or just your your career your opportunities so biases aren't necessarily bad you know um but biases obviously we know can be bad when in terms of it when it stops people from giving someone the benefit of the doubt and stops them from giving someone credibility and giving them a, a chance an opportunity because of negative biases so negative biases are bad so back Back to the story. It's not a real lecture. But so the end of the story is that I used to get consistent emails from people trying to guess at who is Broadband Lawyer. You know, I used to get inboxes on Twitter because I had a Twitter account that was associated with it. I'm not quite sure if the account is still up. If it is, I'm going to, this is, you know, I'm not, just, I'm going to put it, link it here. Um, and I used to get consistent people guessing who I was. And every single person that the person guessed, was a white middle-aged man that I know because I'm in the space, uh, and that's who they guessed was behind this. They, it couldn't have been. They didn't guess not. They didn't guess a white woman. They didn't guess a, a black woman. Definitely not. They didn't guess a black man. You just plenty of us in the space. Um, they 
all the guesses were white middle-aged men in the space. That's who they thought was giving them this information because it was it was obviously the information was good, the, the resource was good, the, the the engagement was good, what they were getting from the site, the, the insights of it that was really good and relevant relevant to their lives, and they loved it, they enjoyed it, but it, it they just didn't. They, they, they assumed that that information, that wealth, that knowledge, where I was coming from, was coming from a white male, a middle-aged white male specifically. Only reason I say this is because I know the people who they guessed. And so that is my story of how I convinced my entire industry that I was a white man for a little while. And then I shuttered it down because the, the purpose of the blog was about when they were the FCC was giving out the broadband grants and it was related to that. And so that era of the industry passed. And as you know, this day and age in tech policy telecommunications all this stuff technology is fast growing fast moving so things that may be new back then are not new for long and so anyway i shut it down and it was also time consuming to keep it up but anyway it can't be done but that's it was just a lesson there so the what oh so the takeaway after that when i shut that down i went back to judge but speaks what i did was i took my face off the top of the bench the the blog i edited the blog when i edited the blog i removed myself from it so um the, i'm still in the about page like if you go on the about page i think i even remove my face from that so you want to learn whatever you have to go and dig up to find out who it is but you're not going to stop yourself from getting the benefit of what i have to share based on a picture that you see when you first click on so that's it just something that's an interesting story this is jj dad um it's friday um subscribe like share if you know anyone who might be interested in learning about biases and things like that and this is almost 10 minutes long um i i, I want to cap these videos at 10 minutes i don't want to hold people too long on uh, on my channel, I mean, on any particular video. However, YouTube likes when people have 10 more minutes, and it's 10 minutes. So that's it. All right. Bye bye. JJ Gat. Like, subscribe, share. See you next time. I, I don't know if it's going to be a Monday. I can't guarantee anything anymore. It's a new year. I'll figure it out. But thanks for listening and watching.